Pilots need to be fit both physically and mentally and it's really important and mandatory for a pilot to have uh, his medical certificate because without that we are not allowed to fly. It's important because it's not only about us pilots but rather it's directly linked to the safety of the whole aircraft and then in turn the passenger sitting behind us. So in today's video I'm going to be answering the important doubts and questions that you guys sent in on my previous video's comments regarding uh, what is allowed, what is not allowed uh, uh, you know, in terms of physical fitness like specs is allowed or not or being obese is allowed or not and what absolutely disqualifies you. So all of that is going to be covered in this video and if you are interested, fasten your seat belts because we are ready for takeoff. What's up fellow viewers and welcome back to the Flytuber flying simplified through YouTube. My name is Elias Ghar and on this channel I talk about interesting aviation facts and aircraft knowledge and sometimes I also explain to you guys regarding your career pathways towards becoming a pilot or such videos wherein I talk about medical licenses and you know requirements to be a pilot. So if you guys are interested and you haven't subscribed already make sure to subscribe to the Flytuber and let's continue with today's video. Flying an aircraft is not an easy task at all. Us pilots over and above having responsibilities of hundreds of of lives in a single day especially if we are doing uh, multiple sectors of flying in a single day like in domestic flying over and above all those responsibilities we need to be physically fit uh, we need to have good concentration levels and really attentive in the cockpit um, we need to have really uh, good uh, and quick reflex actions in general we need to be physically fit and mentally fit to be in the cockpit and be flying basically uh, we are the uh, eyes and brains of the big bird the big metal bird or the aircraft that we are flying and we are responsible for its safety and that is the reason that why uh, no pilot will ever be allowed to fly the aircraft if he doesn't have a medical certificate a valid medical certificate and that is why we are all having this discussion today and because of that all pilots undergo uh, frequent medical tests by class 1 and class 2 impanent medical doctors by DGCA and based on the results and reports of these medical tests and the doctor's opinion pilots are classified as one of these four that is he's either declared fit or fit with limitations or TMU or temporarily medically unfit or finally permanently unfit. Fit meaning everything is okay with the pilot, he's physically fit and it's really safe for him to be operating in the cockpit. Uh, the next one is fit with limitations meaning again the pilot is physically fit but there are some certain uh, things that pilots need to keep in mind, certain limitations with which he can fly. A good example is if a pilot has specs, we're going to be looking uh, more on that in a few minutes. And then the next one is TMU or temporarily medically unfit, meaning that uh, there are certain illness or sickness, temporary problems with the uh, fitness of the pilot, which need some time to cure. And once that happens, uh, the pilot will be tested once again. And if he's fit that time, then he'll be declared fit again. And then finally, permanently unfit, there are certain things that is absolutely not allowed in aviation, not allowed uh, for a pilot to be flying. And if Unfortunately, a pilot, uh, you know, uh, goes to a medical test and, you know, it's diagnosed that the pilot has one of these, then he will be declared permanently unfit. And as the name suggests, this is permanent thing. And uh, once you get a permanently unfit, it's highly likely that you won't be able to fly ever again. So let's look at what these medical requirements to be a pilot are. And uh, these questions and doubts are based on your very own frequently asked questions in the comment section of the previous video. Uh, if you haven't watched that, I'll drop it up in the, uh, you know, I card also. Uh, in the description so check that video out uh, but before we continue i highly suggest that if you guys have any particular query that hasn't been covered in this video or certain things that on a case-to-case -case basis might be allowed i highly recommend that you guys go and refer to a class 2 or a class 1 medical doctors in such cases they are the best guys to have your doubts cleared and obviously if you guys are uh, getting any value and information in this video make sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel you can subscribe uh, you know you can see my own face somewhere in the corner here or uh, on the red button of subscribe uh, below this video let's continue with the topic so let's start with one of the most frequently asked questions uh, regarding pilot medicals and that is is specs allowed to be a pilot and the answer to that is yes specs is allowed to be a commercial pilot you will get your class 1 medical uh, you know certificate but the cash that is your vision although it need not be perfect vision but it needs to be correctable to 6x6 after you wear the glasses or lenses and uh, many of my friends uh, Actually, I know many of my friends right now who are flying. Uh, 
uh, they um, they have specs they, there is no problem each year they go and declare their medicals uh, but the only catch is when you go to the medicals you will be declared fit with limitations like i uh, you know mentioned before and what that means is there is a limitation that is uh, you can fly uh, with specs but the thing is each and every time that you go for your flight always you need to have an extra pair of specs or lenses in case the one you are wearing fails or, or breaks down or something happens uh, like that it's it's just like a concept of redundancy in aircrafts i've talked about that in a previous video meaning just you need to have a backup so yes specs is allowed and you will be able to fly the aircraft another thing related to your eyes is color blindness or night blindness and um, if you have one of these then sadly you will be declared permanently unfit you cannot fly aircraft and the main reason behind that is there uh, the aircraft screens that we use uh, are color coded most of the information is color coded to you know for example know the severity of storm ahead for example and other thing is if you are flying in night and if you have night blindness you it will be really difficult for you to adapt your eyes to adapt to the uh, conditions and to the low light uh, uh, conditions in the night so that is the reason none of these two are allowed if you are color blind or if you are night blind then you cannot fly now what these are you can google it yourself there are certain different tests done basically you'll be uh, shown some uh, numbers uh, you know hidden in colors different colors just like those you can see on the screen right now and if you're able to identify the digits meaning you don't have color blindness else you have so you can google uh, further on that but yeah those two are not allowed to be a pilot and another frequently asked question here is that is lasik surgery or laser surgery uh, allowed to be a pilot or not basically laser surgery is used when uh, you know after that surgery you won't ha have to wear specs all the time uh, although this particular thing is kind of in a gray area but uh, as per my research yeah mostly it is allowed uh, in most cases but the catch to that is once you get your laser surgery done it takes your eyes to heal uh, you know it takes six months and for that period of time you might be temporarily medically unfit but still i highly uh, recommend you to go and you know get a suggestion from uh, class one or class two medical doctor they'll be able to guide you and personal suggestion here is it's really not uh, you know worthy of you to risk a whole career and your passion and dream to fly just to uh, you know have a small comfort of not having to uh, wear specs all the time and the next is your ears you need to have good hearing skills to be a pilot because cockpit is a really noisy environment and you'll be uh, donning your headsets for most of the times so and you need to pick up what the atc told you need to also talk to the uh, your first officer or captain uh, at the same time so uh, yeah uh, and you need to pick up what they are telling clearly so that's why you need to have good hearing skills and for that uh, there is a test named as pure tone audiometry that is done this test determines your hearing threshold that is how high or soft can you hear basically you will be donning uh, headsets in a uh, silent enclosed room and you'll be given a clicker button and the uh, the doctor will be playing sounds at different frequencies and pitches uh, soft sound and really loud noises uh, in the headset as well and each time you you hear a sound you need to click the button and that is how they determine the range that you can hear and the criteria for you to clear this pure tone audiometry test is you shall not have hearing loss in either ear separately of more than 35 decibels at 500 1000 or 2000 hertz or more than 50 decibels at 3000 hertz if you're confused don't worry your class one and class two medical doctors will help you with the test once you go and next you will undergo chest x-rays and then your heart will be checked you'll undergo ecg and 2d echo and treadmill test treadmill test is basically uh, to determine uh, your heart rate at rest and also post exercise so you'll be you know clung with all those wires and then you need to run for a certain minutes on a treadmill and then the readings will be taken down basically you need to have a good heart because obviously the last thing that we want is um, a pilot unconscious in the aircraft and then you'll undergo abdomen and pelvis inspection basically some ultrasound tests over there and then uh, followed by a naked body test don't worry ladies will have separate female doctors and then guys will have a uh, male medical doctors over there basically they don't want any stone unturned they want to check you from head to toe because obviously you're going to be carrying a lot of responsibilities and many lives uh, on your shoulders so that's why they want to check uh, that you are perfectly fit and fine and next certain blood and urine tests basically your sugar levels will be checked and uh, your hemoglobin levels will be 
be checked because uh, you know you need to have at least normal oxygen carrying capacity which is what hemoglobin does this is because we are exposed to a lot of variation in o2 levels especially uh, high up in the air uh, the o2 levels drop significantly and this happens to us very frequently we are exposed to these conditions so that is why that is tested and then diabetes is tested in normal circumstances uh, diabetes is okay if it is controllable by diet and uh, you know medication but if at all it's a severe case wherein you require uh, you know insulin injections or more than two uh, combination of medications to keep it under control then in that case you might be permanently unfit so keep that in mind and the next uh, one of the most important and frequently asked questions is is obesity allowed or not can you be heavy or fat or overweight uh, if you want to be a pilot and the answer to that is your BMI will be checked BMI is basically body mass index that is the ratio of your height to weight you can calculate your BMI uh, you know uh, online it's really easy you'll get a number and then scale it to the uh, different ranges of the BMI and you need to be in normal range uh, it's best that you be in the normal range uh, of the BMI then you're fit and fine if at all you are slightly overweight or underweight then in that case uh, you know uh, certain more tests needs to be done tests like lipid profile or LFT that is liver function test or thyroid tests for example and if those tests are fine then you still will clear the uh, you know class one and uh, class two medical fitness uh, you know it's just that they'll be mentioning uh, that uh, suggestion that you need to you know reduce the weight next time but if at all you are seriously overweight or underweight like a bmi of over 35 for example if you are you're really fat and heavy then in that case you might uh, you know get a tmu or temporarily medically unfit and then you need to uh, you cannot fly for a certain period of time and th uh, for that amount of time you need to go and you know walk out and lose some weight and come back again get the tests done once again and if you clear then you can fly and the next thing and very important one once again is height how tall or short can you be if you want to be a pilot what how long how long oh five six and although it's not mentioned clearly anywhere that you need to be uh, you know certain uh, feet and uh, inches at all uh, at least or at the most uh, but uh, a good ballpark is you need to be somewhere about 5 feet that is 155 centimeters to about 200 centimeters which comes around 6.7 feet. Uh, this is once again not restrictive and on case to case basis you might be allowed. The main reason why this range is is because uh, you need to make sure that you can you know uh, reach all the overhead buttons and switches over there and also at the same time your legs need to fit in and you know you need to be able to deflect the rudder pedals and brake as well so that is the reason and if at all you don't fall in this height range once again don't get disheartened i highly recommend to go and have a referral from class 2 or class 1 medical doctor if at all they find that you still are not uh, in this range then there is something known as cockpit assessment test wherein you will be sitting in a cockpit and the doctor will be checking if you are able to operate a flight and you know reach all the buttons all the important things if you are able to carry out the different uh, necessary actions in the cockpit then still you will be clearing your uh, class 1 medicals and on that note did you guys know that certain airlines might have their own restrictions on these medicals like if at all uh, the particular airline uh, flies only uh, you know one type of aircraft fleet uh, and that aircraft uh, cockpit is really crammed up it doesn't have much space then in such a case that particular airline might have a restriction over and above that that uh, the pilots that we hire uh, cannot be any higher than so and so uh, feet and the next one is fractures if you had undergone uh, an unfortunate incident and you broke your bone then in that case uh, in most cases once you recover completely uh, you will still clear your class 1 medicals there is no issue uh, until unless the fracture was really compound and kind of an irreplaceable uh, fracture or if it might require you know permanent rods to be put up meri ek tang nakli hai main hockey ka bahut bada khiladi tha ek din uday bhai ko meri kisi baat par gussa aa gaya to meri hockey stick se meri tang ke char tukde kar diye in such cases you uh, you know it might render you a failure of your uh, you know medicals and then it might render you unfit to fly but once again i highly suggest you guys to uh, go ahead and get a referral from the medical doctors the next is drugs and narcotics and i'm sure none of my subscribers are in such practice 
practices but still it's my responsibility to let you guys know that it's not allowed uh, and uh, although in the class one or class two medicals i presume that it is not tested but for your information before you join an airline it's mandatory the airline gets your you know uh, tests done your uh, drugs and narcotics tests done and uh, it's completely not allowed to uh, you know be flying uh, with those practices so I, and obviously it's also punishable by law it's it's illegal so uh, please don't go in that direction stay away from that and the next and very important as per the current situation thing is covid 19 what if you are tested positive for this deadly disease uh, the current regulations for that is if it's really a mild and asymptomatic case just you have tested positive and there's mild symptoms then you need to quarantine for 14 days at least and then take care and once you recover and on top of that you also test negative rtpcr after all this and then you need to have a referral from your company medical doctor if all of that is done you can get back to flying again but if at all it was a severe case uh, you know you were symptomatic and you couldn't recover even after uh, 14 days quarantine and then you know you were tested positive again and again in that case you know once your quarantine is done and you really heal completely and then you test negative uh, RT-PCR after that you need to go ahead with your class 1 medical once again and then and only then you will be able to fly the aircraft and the next and last one in today's list is highly deformed bodies due to genetic disorders for example uh, so much so that you are not even able to walk uh, you know easily uh, in such cases most likely you will be uh, getting a permanently unfit uh, one relatable uh, question that one of the subscribers asked in the comments was what about knock knees basically knock knees uh, you know you can see uh, on screen what knock knees is this is an example uh, so yeah knock knees is mostly allowed uh, the the thing is you know you need to be able to carry out cockpit tasks and you know pressing the rudder pedals and braking action you should not have any problems in those and if at all it's really severe and you know even while you are walking your knees you know hit each other and it's a problem for you even to walk in that case you might uh, get a permanently medical unfit well that's it for this video guys and once again this was just uh, these questions were based on the frequently asked questions that you guys put up in the previous videos comments and some others from my own side and my personal suggestion once again is uh, you know go ahead and get yourself tested by your class 1 or class 2 medical doctors they are the best person to let you know if you are fit or unfit for flying and one final you know, bonus advice that I can give you here is that please go ahead and get your class 2 as well as your class 1 medicals done even before you start uh, flying and spending any money in this field because it's really disheartening for you to you know have spent a lot of money and then further down the line you get to know that there is certain problem and uh, you can no longer fly so i highly recommend you do that and if you guys found any value out of this video smash that like button and subscribe to the channel in the next video i'll be throwing my personal suggestions uh, as to you know what steps you can take from your side to make sure that you clear these medical tests and until then, keep safe, stay safe and happy landings.